unto you. So I want to do the third part of fulfilling your ministry. Everybody say fulfilling your ministry. And every one of us, we have received gifts. We have received abilities from God to be able to fulfill our ministry. And I want us to look at our key text from John chapter 13. And we'll read from verse 13 to 17. John 13, verse 13 to 17. Now Jesus, this is Jesus speaking. He says, you call me teacher and Lord. And you say well, for I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Verse 15. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than than he who sent him. The verse 17. Which is the last verse. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Amen. Now, one of the things that I want to say in my introduction is that Jesus, at this point in time, was trying to present a very important truth to the disciples. Remember that he spent more time with his 12 disciples, pouring his life into them, speaking into their lives, calling out their giftings and stuff like that before he finally went up to heaven after the resurrection. Now, Jesus is a fantastic teacher. He's a great teacher. Uh, I, say, I say most of the times that Jesus didn't go to any training college in Ghana. Jesus didn't go to the University of Education, when about to do education. But he is known as one of the best teachers who ever lived. In fact, he is known more as a teacher than a, than a miracle worker. He's known as the greatest teacher who ever lived. Why? Because Jesus could pick things that are complex and break them down to simple-minded people to be able to grasp and understand it. Being a good teacher is not your eloquence. It's not verbosity. It's not words. It is you being able to bring down, break, break the thing down into You can see I'm not a teacher. <laughs> Alright. So a teacher can take a very complex subject and then can just break it down and teach a little child and the little child will understand it. So Jesus will use a lot of models. He will use parables, which were stories. And every great and good teacher knows that if you want people to really understand and capture what you are trying to communicate to them, you use demonstration. So in this particular situation, Jesus was demonstrating to them in teaching them a lesson. But typical of us as human beings, most of the times, we will focus on the demonstration and miss the lesson. But Jesus was teaching us a lesson. And the lesson, what was the lesson? The lesson was that they were supposed to serve one another, which is ministry, which we have been talking about. Serving one another. So what did Jesus do? He picks a towel, he put it on his shoulders, he picks a bowl and washes the feet of the disciples, wipes their feet, and he says that just as I, the Lord, the master, the teacher, I have done so, you too follow my example. Today in the church, our emphasis is not in serving one another. Our, answer, our emphasis now is direction. So we wash our feet. For what? I don't have a problem with you washing feet. But why do you wash the feet? And when Jesus washed the feet, what did he say? Because the feet can be one of the most dangerous places to wash. In those days, they covered great distances walking because we didn't have cars. We didn't have motorbikes and bicycles and stuff like that. They had donkeys, but how many people had donkeys? They had horses. How many people had horses? So most of, the, most of them walked. And I think that that's one of the reasons why they live longer. 
Today, a lot of you, by the time I am done with two minutes into my preaching, you are already sleeping. Because your metabolism is slow. And yet, demon, you who from a good so on your feet. But you are the best shabby for. Oh, yeah, typical of church. And uh, we will, oh, yeah, the best shall be for. Every time we want something to put on the devil. And he deserves it. I didn't send him. I didn't send him. Did I send him? And so we'll put, put it on him. It's a song, right? Is it put it on me or put it on him? That's awful. You don't remember the lyrics, but you know the sound. It's okay. <laughs> So Jesus was illustrating to them that you have to serve. And he used the washing of feet to introduce them to that lesson. Don't miss that lesson. Because that is what Jesus was trying to communicate. He washed all of them their feet. The washing of their feet was not to change their shebre. It was not to change their destiny. It was not to give them favor because they were traveling. No. It was for them to know that they are supposed to be committed to each other and serve one another. And that is what our lives in Christ is all about. We are supposed to be positioned in the body of Christ, in the family of God, to serve one another. And let me tell you something. Ministry is part of the process of us becoming like Christ. When you get involved in ministry, and that's why I believe that anybody who gets saved and is born again, the next thing he must actively get involved in is ministry. Yeah. Because it is going to be a testing of your faith. It's going to be a testing of your commitment. It's going to be a testing of your character. That is where the real deal is. And let me tell you something. Human beings are difficult to serve. Serving people if you have ever served people before, those of you who have husbands and wives, don't turn to your left or right if he's sitting there or she's sitting there. Those of you who have kids, I don't want this. I don't like that. I don't want this. I don't like that. Sometimes they just need a little patience. One of the things I don't like is when I'm hungry, I want to eat and they are now going to warm the food. I can't stand it. And yet I can go the whole day without eating. But when I'm ready to eat, I can't wait for the food to be set. Because a bar, neyo, aramebwa. But you need patience. Sometimes it's, it's like, Human beings are just, we are just complex. In church, it is worse. In church, it is worse. I'm telling you. You do this, this one says this. You do this, this one says this. You sit here, this one says this. Somebody just walks into church and says, ah, ah, why is the church so dirty? Meanwhile, he didn't even, she doesn't even know how the whole place was put up. Eh? But why is the pastor's tie like that? As if he's in, he's in charge of the pastor's wardrobe. And all kinds of things. <laughs> and, you know, can you imagine that you have become a Christian? You have, you are, you are a billionaire. Let me put it that way. You are a billionaire or a millionaire. You have become a Christian. You come to church. And because you want to do ministry, you believe God has called you to serve people. You have a heart for it. So you decide to be an usher. And somebody on the social, based on social certification or socioeconomic stratification, the person does not even have even an SHS qualification. He has no job. And he comes to church, you are ushering him. You can, you can em give employment to him and his whole house. You are ushering him and he chuckles at you or snaps at you or gives you a look or gives you an attitude. It's not easy. And on top of that, do you know the song they were saying? After all, Obia and Obia. So ministry can be tough. Sometimes the people that you sacrifice, I know people that have labored, paid the school fees of people, taking care of homes, taking care of families, and they are the, the very people you took care of them. They are the very people who stab you in the back. The very people you labor for. 
I've hanged out in church for a long time. So me, I'm be careful. There's nothing you say, complimentary or non-complimentary, that changes anything. Because I've been, I'm, I'm like a church mouse. We have started hanging in church for a long time. And one of the things I've discovered is that if you listen to what people say, you will never give your best to God. You will never serve God. You will never be faithful. Only engineers who resign. Pastors resign. There are some of you, you used to sing in the choir. Somebody just mafiaed you. You said, also for choir master, music director, take your choir. And there you are. You got offended. You were angry. You were annoyed because you were not appreciated. And you quit. But all these things are testing moments. They are, a they are a tool, a system, a, me a mechanism. God is using to shape you. God is using to build you up and build character in you. And the moment you get into ministry, then you begin to understand what church is all about. Because some of you come to church, church, everything is fine. Everybody is smiling. Nobody is giving you any attitude. You think that is how it is. You get involved and see. When you say you are six, you are coming to clean the church. You appear and only two people have come to clean the church. When you say you are going to evangelism, that one, I won't go there today. So ministry can be tough. And every one of you who decides, because it is a must, you don't have a choice. After being born again and being saved, the next thing is ministry. You don't have a choice. But you have to be prepared before you enter. Any venture you enter into unprepared, you can have a lot of surprises that can throw you off balance. So there are people who want to start a business. They don't prepare. They just enter their business. Everybody is selling tomatoes. They also start selling some. They don't prepare. They have challenges and then they will quit. Sometimes even it happens in relationships. People don't prepare. Everybody is going out. So you are also going out. Why don't you stay in your room? Why do you also want to go out? By the way, why do you call it going out? Why is it called going out? Why is it that when people start a relationship, they call it going out? Is it that when you get into a relationship, you are supposed to be going out? Or you, you, you like staying inside? It's, but preparation is key. You want to do a master's program. You want to do this program. You want to do this degree. You want to do this venture. You want to do this project. You need to be prepared. And Jesus says you have to be prepared because you can't put your hand on the plow and turn back because anybody who looks forward and holds on to the plow and he turns back, Jesus says you are not fit for the kingdom. You are not fit for the kingdom. Again, Jesus gives another powerful illustration. He says that anybody who wants to build a house, let him first sit down Count the cost. Count the cost. Before he can start the venture. If not, you will stand and you will get in the middle of the way. It is like when our president wanted to be president. I'm not sure he counted the cost. I'm sure he just wanted to be president. Because if he had counted the cost... Do you understand? I become like the Ethiopian eunuch. I don't understand what I'm reading. I don't understand. I don't understand. I know she. I just. And if you are not careful, it will destroy your faith. It will mess up your confession. But I pray that you will not be caught up by what is happening. In the midst of scarcity and lack, may God still be your provider. May God be your supplier. May you still prosper. Because if Isaac sowed in the year of famine and reaped a hundredfold in return, it is possible for you. Oh, I said it is possible for you. 
I said it is possible for you. May we not allow what is happening around us to change our confession and our belief in the name of the Lord Jesus. So look at this. Jesus says, count the cost. <laughs> count the cost. You know the interesting thing? There are many people today, and I believe that this message is for you. There are many people today who are afraid to get involved because they are afraid of being hurt. Ew. Getting involved? Hmm. Some of you cry, you are afraid that people will come and disturb you and beg, they will beg you for things. Yeah. No, I've been in church for a long time. There are some people, they look at your dressing and they look at your ministry and because of you, they will join your ministry. I know one guy. He loved food so much. Every Sunday be a visitation or rotating. I go to Christie's house this Sunday. No, we did for food. Nobody goes to his house. We have all kinds of people in the family of God. You know that in every family, there are all kinds of people. I don't know about you, but there are some genuinely. There are some, some of us, there are people who are members of our family. We wish we were not related to them. But you can't change it. It's like the way some of you, you are now. We can't too much. You are my brother. You are my sister. You have to take you like that. Tell somebody that I hope you are not like one of those pastor is talking about. So ministry can become difficult for people. But you have to have a holy determination to push and press through. You have to have the commitment and the mental and spiritual resilience to push it and say you don't give up. You are committed to God. You are committed to Christ. And you are willing and ready to offer service. Whether you are complimented or not. Whether somebody supports you or not. Whether there is a challenge or a difficulty you have to confront. Listen, you are committed to it. And there are many people who are not committed to the work of God. So the small wind comes. And it blows them off. Hey! Why? Ananias and Zafiria. Why? Why did you go and sow, sell your land and to give the money to church? Ananias, no, don't take all. This church people, this church people. Ananias, don't take all. Take some. And go and put the, the rest at the apostles' feet. Eh? You alone, this thing you are doing, is the church for your father? I remember when I was in Kumasi, there was one guy. Somebody met him. I say, you, you, why? You do too much. Is the church for your father? Why? Because the person is always there to get things done. But don't let discouragement, criticism, don't let persecution, don't let anything anybody say or does disorient you and shift your focus from serving God. Because if you are diligent and you are faithful, the Lord will honor and will reward your labor. God bless you. Amen.